In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-channel harmonic delay using Max MSP, more specifically the MC family of objects in Max MSP. Multi-channel harmonic delay is a cool combination of words, but it's actually fairly simple to achieve. All we have to do is to figure out how delay works in a multi-channel context, how to pitch shift in max, how to use the pitch shift in a multi-channel context, and finally come up with an algorithm so the pitch shifts are not random and they are based on the notes of a certain chord that we determine ourselves. If we add a bit of delay and audio effects afterwards, we have some really cool soundscapes. So let's begin. I want to start with regular delay. Nothing fancy, nothing multi-channel. I just want to import an audio and I want to hear it one second later, one second delayed on my, let's say, left speaker. So I'm going to go to my audio tab right here and let's choose, I don't know, something like bell. That's always a good standard uh, sample when we are working with things. And I'm going to, of course, create easy DAC so I can hear the audio output. And normally, if I just want to listen to it, I would do this, right? Lock the patch. And it's a bell sound. Fantastic. Now, there are a few ways of achieving delay in Max, and uh, usually the more fancy way, the more interesting way is to use tap in and tap out. Well, we are not going to use this in this video, but uh, do check these objects out if you really want to get into feedback, uh, feedback delays especially, but delays in general as well. But again, I'm going to keep things simple and I'm going to have delay. And delay tilde is a fairly simple object, right? So I can just uh, plug it in here. So the audio goes into delay tilde and the output just goes to my easy deck and I think Nothing will have changed. Yep, there is no delay. Why isn't there any delay? Because I haven't specified anything to this object. And I need to tell delay, first of all, it's maximum delay memory. This is how delay almost always works in signal processing. What delay does is it creates uh, some kind of memory buffer. It assigns part of the computer memory to remembering what happened X seconds ago or X milliseconds ago or X samples ago. So later if I trigger delay, if I tell it to uh, delay the incoming audio signal within that constraint, it is able to do that. If that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, that's all right. The point is we need to give it that initial argument of maximum delay memory. Now, this is where uh, the fun does not begin because we would think of giving the argument as milliseconds, wouldn't we? So I would like to say, I want this to delay uh, for a thousand milliseconds. So I want to hear this a second later, but nothing happens. Well, first of all, I've just set the maximum delay memory and I have not told the delay uh, what I'd want the delay time to be. And second of all, the arguments or anything with delay really does not work in milliseconds but in samples. This is so important that I'm going to write this down. So delay expects samples, not milliseconds. I can also type things well, of course. So what are samples? Uh, you have probably heard of the term sample rate. Uh, if you go to, for example, options to audio status on, uh, on Max MSP, you'll see that you have this thing called sampling rate. You also have this on your DAW, you also have this on your computer and anything digital that has to do with audio and signals, really. And while this uh, setting changes a few things about audio quality and possible frequencies and uh, a possible frequency fold over and all of this nerdy stuff, uh, I just want to know what my current sampling rate is. I want to know how many discrete bits of information is going through my system per second to simulate audio, to simulate the the air pressure changing per second or whatever the physical equivalent is. And I know that right now this is 48,000 samples. So one second is 48,000 samples. And initially, I'm going to set this delay as 480,000 samples, which means 10 seconds. Now, again, this is not going to do anything, right? If I play this, it's just a good old bell. Because I need to use either a second argument or the second inlet of delay to tell it 
the delay time, how much I actually want to delay the audio. And this is something I can change. I can delay it five seconds and later eight seconds, but never above 10 seconds, because that's what I gave it as the memory size of my delay. All right, and now I don't know about you, but dealing with samples all the time uh, really bothers me because I, I, I'm a millisecond kind of person. I like to think of things in terms of milliseconds. So I'm going to make use of a very useful MSP object called SAMPS, nope, the other way around, MSMS to SAMPS, tilde convert milliseconds to samples. You'll see that there is an MC version of this here too. We will be using that in a few minutes. But for now, let's stick to MS to SAMPS. And what does this do? Well, this will receive um, either a, a signal input or any numerical input for milliseconds, and it's going to convert it to its equivalent in samples. To view this, I can also create a number tilde object, right? This will view, let me view the values in audio signals. So if I do, I don't know, a uh, thousand milliseconds, right? That's one second. Well, look at this. Suddenly, this MS to SAMPS is sending out 48,000 as a value, which is how many samples this is according to my audio settings. If I changed my sample rate to something else, I would be getting a different value here. That's also why it's really important to use objects like this so your patch will work in different settings. But okay, so the second inlet is receiving uh, 48,000, which is the delay time. It has a maximum memory of 480,000. So now, if I play this, well, it is coming in a second later. Maybe what might make this easier to see is if I do this. So the right channel of my audio is coming directly from the audio sample I'm triggering. The left channel, however, is going through delay, meaning that it will appear one second later. And, you know, I can play around with this if you want. I can devote this video to just messing with this delay, modulating the signal, applying LFOs, different oscillators to get really vacuum results. Something I'm doing manually right now. It sounds not very good, but it is something to play around with if you're interested in cool effects. But we have created delay. Right, so this is a very simple way of doing delay. In fact, it is so simple, I'm going to save my patch so I don't have to recreate something simple over and over again if uh, my patch crashes. Now, let me sever this patch cord and let's think about the multi-channel aspect of this. Well, working with multi-channel objects is usually very easy, right? I can just copy my initial sound input and I can simply create mc.delay mc.anything is just that object, but a multi-channel version, right? This is, this is, of course, for MSP objects. So I can simply give it the same argument, 480,000. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? I can, instead of ms to samps, I can create mc.ms to samps, right? And I can give it the same value as an input. So not 1036, but 1000 sounds good. Now, one little problem is this mc.delay is receiving in its first inlet a normal audio signal, right? Uh, so this mc.delay does not know how many channels, how many audio channels it's, it is supposed to process and send out. And since this is the first object uh, that is multi-channel, that is going to be sending multi-channel audio, we have to give it the chance attribute. And let's have it at 10. Let's have 10 instances of delay. And then, of course, because I have 10 channels, I do have to mix this down. So I'm going to use mc.mixdown. Uh, as an argument, I'm going to give it two. So this is all mixed down to a stereo signal. And it's always good practice to use the auto gain attribute, which is going to uh, scale the overall gain by the number of output channels, which means if they're all playing together over each other, on top of each other, it does not uh, destroy your ears and speakers and headphones and your family and your life and your bank account. So auto gain one is a pretty good idea. And to hear what I have, I can either create an mc.easy deck, which will receive this multi-channel signal, which has uh, two channels in it. So if I play this, 
I will hear it a second later and it will stop a second later as well. Or if I want to get back into the realm of regular audio signals, I can simply use mc.unpack tilde and then I have to give it the argument two. So it will split this audio into two channels and then I can just use good old easy DAC. This is going to do the exact same thing. Now, the fun thing, well, one of the first fun things is here. So this is where the fun starts because this mcms to samps can theoretically send more than one audio channel, right? And this MC delay is using 10 channels. So if it receives a 10 channel audio signal uh, to its second inlets, it is going to apply different values to each instance of delay meaning that I can have 10 sounds where one begins in 100 milliseconds, another one comes in in 560 milliseconds, any kind of value up to uh, 10 seconds. And we can try to generate some values, right? There's a good, uh, relatively new good object for this called mc.generate, which again, we will not use. I, I don't know why I'm introducing all of these cool objects that I will not use in this video, but I guess it's good to know in any case, but I just want to use noise. Right. Uh, in fact, I want to use MC noise, which is white noise, which is bunch of constant random values between minus one and one. And what happens if I use MC noise and with uh, the chance 10 attributes? Well, I am going to play this, but I'm probably going to be editing this in the video so it does not sound horrible. But let's see what happens if I have my MC that easy deck and I do this. Yep, that was as horrible as I expected. So this is essentially 10 instances of white noise generation. So it's extreme white noise. So this does not have a lot of use to us. We are not doing subtractive synthesis. We are just trying to get random values. And I can see those values if I use jit.cellblock. This is something we normally use to visualize jitter matrices, but it works with multi-channel audio signals too. If I plug this here, you can see that I have 10 instances of constant random values that go between minus one and one. So if I just plug this to my MCMS to SAMPS, nothing good will come out of it. I, I just, I'm not even going to try it because I have already heard enough horrible loud noises. But instead I'm going to try to capture these random values. I'm going to make it so I can just hold a certain instance of these values so I have set of 10 random values at audio rates. And for this, I'm going to use mc.psa or mc.sah or mc.sample and hold. Right, what, what this is going to do, and this is an incredibly useful object, by the way, again, in signal processing, it is going to receive a signal with continuous input because this is an audio signal. Then it is going to look for an initial argument, right? This is going to be your trigger value. And the second inlet of this is going to be the trigger input, meaning the audio channel going in here. If it ever goes above this value, if it ever crosses 0.5, then it is going to just latch onto whatever is, whichever value is coming from the first inlet and give only that even if the incoming values keep on changing. So, I put mc.noise in my first inlet and I just need normal instance of audio. I just need an impulse that will go from zero to one to zero to sample and hold these values. And a very easy way to do this is to use click, which will create an impulse. In fact, I can use live.scope to visualize this, right? I just have to send a bank to click tilde. And each time I do this, I'm going to get a value, a sample value of one and then zero again, which as you will know, one is higher than 0.5. So that is going to hold whatever is coming into here, right? So if I do this and let's all again, visualize the results, then let's not audify the results, but visualize the results. And if I click this, I have set of 10 individual values. There, there are a bunch of zeros here, but that's just a quirk of uh, jits.cell block. So what I actually have are 10 random values. And 
Do notice that these values, mc.noise values, are still coming, but mc.sah is holding on to these values and continuously sending them. And each time I send an impulse to the second inlet of mc.sah, this is going to happen again, again, and again. Which is great. Now, uh, there are no 0.67 samples, samples you know, increment by uh, one, two, and three, and four, and we are not going to go into interpolating samples. So what I'm going to do is to use the MC dot scale object, right? So I can simply say my input range is minus one to one, and I want to scale this to, I don't know, uh, 500 milliseconds to 3,500 milliseconds, right? So half a second to three and a half seconds. So I can take whatever comes out of mc.sah and I can even see what comes out of mcms to sams And as you can see, I'm getting a bunch of samples. Again, they have some decimal wackiness going on, but I don't care about that right now. The point is now mc.ms to sams is sending individual values for each of its 10 channels. So what happens if I play this now? I'm getting a bunch of delay and that's really cool, isn't it? This is at a fixed rhythm. It's, ju it's just these values. These are the delay times. But of course I can send an impulse again to generate another random set of impulses and delay times. And if I want, I can even loop this so I get a constant soundscape of bells, which might be interesting for some projects or artistic things, I don't know. But what I now want is to move on to the pitch shifting part. So how do we harmonize this, right? I can try to transport this, modulate this, but how do I do it? So let's say I get, a, I get echoes in major seven chords. I either get the this pitch or I get a major third or I get a perfect fifth or I get a major seventh. Well, let's go back to our friend uh, single channel. I think single channel has been pretty lonely here, uh, hence the name single channel. Also, it is a single audio channel and not multi-channel. And let's think about pitch shift. In fact, let's type pitch shift into uh, our object box. And we will see that there is a pitch shift tilde object, which is ZTX real time pitch shifting. Use the pitch shift object to load a, per, a load a perform pitch shifting on an input signal. While well, someone tried to write something here, uh, but the thing is, this does do pitch shift, and it does work for a variety of things. So let's again look at the single channel version. Normally, I can give pitch shift an initial argument for how many channels it is going to have, but I don't care about that right now because I just want to have my normal bell and then I want to have my delayed and pitch shifted bell. And again, I haven't told pitch shift anything, so if I just play this, I receive, well, just the same sound a second later because that's kind of what I set in my delay pipeline, but pitch shift has nothing so far. So I can give pitch shift, the pitch shift factor as a signal. This is important, right? I cannot give it as a float number or an integer. It has to be a signal. So I'm going to type in my pitch shift factor as a float number. Then I'm going to use sig tilde to convert this into an audio signal. Just like this. Now, well, let's, let's see what happens first. Right? So what if I give it a value of two? Is this going to be a major second or uh, two half steps? Or is it going to be the frequency doubled? Whoa, that was pretty, that was pretty high pitch. I think that's an octave higher, right? And I think if I do 0.5 as my pitch shifting factor, now that's a nice sound. And that is, I believe, an octave lower, right? Because by default, pitch shift is taking this value coming into its second inlet and it's interpreting it as a pitch shift factor compared to the frequency of the original audio where two means it's twice the, twice the frequencies, an octave higher. Uh, or 0.5 means it's healthy uh, frequency, which means it's an octave lower, etc., etc. But that's not very harmonic. This is incredibly useful if you want to work with different kinds of tunings, for example, if you want to have harmonic equal temperament tuning. 
but that's not what we are doing here. So I'm going to look at the attribute use sense, right? If I do use sense one, this will enable the use of sent values in the second inlet of the pitch shift object to specify pitch change. And you might know that scent is just like a, a tone or a semitone or a step or a half step. It's a distance between pitches and equal temperament where one semitone equals 100 cents. Again, this is also useful for different kinds of tunings. But the thing is, I can, for instance, now instead of 0.5 or 2, I can give 100 as my pitch shifting factor. And I believe now I'm, I'm going to get something different. Yes, that was half the step higher. And I can do the opposite, minus 100. I can go 100 cents or one semitone below. And I can get all of these cool different pitches, which is nice. But how do we apply this to the multi-channel world? Well, Let's see, I think it has to come into factor after the delay, right? After the delay line has happened, I need to create mc.pitch shifts. It's like what I said, right? It's just very, it's very intuitive. I have pitch shift, so I can just type mc.pitch shift. I can again give it the attribute of, where is it, where is it, where is it? You sense one, and I don't need to specify the amount of channels because a 10 channel multi-channel audio signal is coming into here. So if I don't specify anything, it's just going to process it uh, all 10 channels and it's going to send out a 10 channel audio signal, which is good for us. Whoops, there we go. Now, the second inlet, uh, pitch shift and send. So again, I would have to use mc.sig, right? Uh, but I can't really just use a single number box. If I do that, all of the delays are going to change by the same amount, right? So if I do, for example, minus 200, and if I play this, well, everything is a whole tone lower, which is again nice, but how can I get 10 different instances of uh, random values that fit into a logic? So again, they give me a major seventh chord or the notes belonging to a major seventh chord if I take this as my root note. All right, let's think about this. So we have to step outside of uh, the world of audio signals and MSP and head back into regular max. That's why I made some space here. So this is going to be our working space. Now let's, let's think of these chords as intervals, right? So if I want a major seventh chord, I well, what are my intervals? added onto my root note, well, there is zero, right? I, I add zero, zero uh, half steps that is, to my root, so I have the same notes. Then I add, let's see, one, two, three, four, so I go up a perfect, th perfect third, that doesn't exist, I go a major third higher. Then five, six, seven, so it's a perfect fifth higher than my root, and eight, nine, 10, 11. Right, so this is the formula for a major seventh chord. And if I want, I can come up with different chords. I'll probably do that at the end, but let's work with this, keeping in mind that this list might be of different lengths when I input it into whatever algorithm I'm going to create here. Now, I want to pick random elements of this list 10 times, and I want to pack those into a list. Or I want to uh, tell MC Sick to use those 10 unique values for each of its audio signals. Since I'm going to be telling MC SIG to have 10 instances and since MC.SIG is not receiving a 10 channel audio signal, I should specify the chance 10 argument. I mean the ch chance 10 attribute. All right, but back here. So I need to know a few things and I need to know the length of this list. I need to be able to look up certain parts of this list. So I have to use the ZL objects. I have used these objects in my previous videos. Essentially, these objects deal with lists. They process lists. They uh, look up lists. They create elements in lists. They short them. They sort them. So whatever you want to do with lists, you want to use ZL objects. And from experience, I know I can use ZL len to know the length 
of a list, right? So if I send a list, it's going to tell me how long that list is, which is something we will need because as I have said, this list for a chord might be longer. I might want to do 11 chords suddenly and then change to a four note chord instead. And then I'll look up is going to receive a list to its second inlet. Right, uh, this is a called in list, so I load the list into ZL lookup, and then when I give a number, an integer number to ZL lookup, it's going to well look up elements in that list and tell me what the first element is. But we have to consider that ZL lookup starts from zero, so index number zero is zero, right? That's the first thing in my list. One is four, two is seven three is 11 and then nothing happens because I don't have 14 or 15 things in my list. So to do this randomly, then what I can do is to get the length of the list, uh, use the random objects, just send this value to its second inlet. So now random will generate values up to, but not including four. So I'm going to get random numbers between zero and three. Right, if I bang this random, one, 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 zero, three, one, zero, three. Don't you just hate that when you just start generating random numbers and you get a bunch of the same numbers? So for a second, you think, is, is it really generating random numbers or is it stuck? But in this case, it's not stuck. I have done this correctly. So I'm getting random values between zero and three, which is exactly what I need to send to ZL lookup to get random elements of my lists. Right, so each time I click this, now I'm getting random things and I can easily add a nine tier, right? So 11, uh, let's see, 12, 13, 14 is going to be the 11th of my now major, no, that's going to be the ninth of my major ninth chord. And this changes this value to five, which makes random generate values between zero and four, which means it will now look up also the fifth element in my list. All right, so now this is a nice system, but I need to be able to do this 10 times and I need to tell each time to mc.sig, take your first signal, make it this random value. Then take your second signal and make it this random value and take your third signal and make it this random value and so on and so on. And to do this in regular programming languages, well, not regular programming languages, text-based programming languages, I would be using a for loop in Max, I use Uzi which sends many bang messages at once. And in this case, I want 10 banks. So when I send a bank to Uzi, it's going to send out 10 banks from its first inlet, it's going to send out a final bang in its middle uh, outlet, sorry, when it's done banging. So it's its done banging bang. And the final outlet is going to send a current index starting from one. Let's see, so I need to again, on each bang, I need to generate a random number. So this has to go here. Each time I do random, it generates something. Then I have to come up with a way to get this random value, plug it into the first uh, channel of MC sig, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. And let me just look at the reference to refresh my memory because I think, yes, I have to use the set value message. And again, this this well, that, that's a very long this is a very long explanation, but I just care about the first paragraph, the word set value followed by a boat followed by both a channel index starting at one, and any message that can be sent to the wrapped object sends the message to an individual instance within the MC wrapper. Right, so I can say set value one, so the first audio signal of my MC sig that has ten audio channels, the first audio channel should have the value of five and the second one should have 10 and the fifth one should have 99, I don't know. Right, so I have to structure this message, which means I can use pack with a C. Uh, so set value zero, zero. Let's initialize these as zero and later we can fill in those values by using the second and third inlets of our object. So Let's again think of what we need to do here. So first of all, I trigger Uzi and the following happens 10 times. It's first of all, it sends the current index starting from one, which is perfect because I need to know my channel number and that coincides perfectly with my channel number, right? So now this becomes set value one blank. 
and then on the next iteration set value two blank set value three blank and so on so this happens first these this happens right to left then I'm ignoring the second outlet because I don't care about it so it can become very sad if it wants to and I'm going to look at the very first outlet this happens last it will send out a bank which will trigger a random number within a specified range it's going to look this up in this list and it's going to give me a random value which can then go here right because this is set value the channel number the value itself perfect and i just need to send this afterwards uh, i can't really use the done banging bang because this happens after all 10 banks and i need this to happen at the end of every bank after each bang this should also receive a bang so i'm going to use the trigger objects i'm going to type in tbb trigger bang bank so each bang of the uzi first sends out a bank to random this gets a, a random value plugs it here then another bank comes out and it sends this message here Whew, okay this does look like a spaghetti algorithm i will probably clean this up later but this should work right this should get me 10 values this should set those 10 values uh, as a different uh, audio channel of my mc.sig and that should go into the second inlet of mc.pitch shifts and just like that we are back into the world of multi-channel audio again let's use jit.cell block to see if mc.sig is being a good boy and playing along so now if i press this uzi hi i'm getting random values 14 14 4 0 14 4 14 0 0 or 11 7 7 14 14 14 11 and there are a bunch of zeros here but again ignore those because uh, I have 10 values here and again this is a jits.cell block uh, weirdness and wackiness and all those kinds of things we don't care about that but now a potential pitfall is the fact that I'm using sense and I'm defining things in health steps and remember the formula right uh, one health step equals 100 cents so something I can also do is when I look up these values, I can just multiply those by 100 to make sure they are cents and not half steps. So mc.pitch shift can in, uh, implement that in a nice way. So times 100. Whoop, I did not mean to make it big like that. Just plug it to the output of mc, I mean zl lookup. And now, if I do this, there we go, 1100, 1100, 700, 400, 700, 700, 1400, 1100, 0, 700, 0, 0, 0, and then a bunch of unnecessary zeros. And this should get me a major, uh, major 7th or major 9th delay. All right, that, that does sound nice. It is a bit high pitched, so I can't really feel the harmony. So I'm going to see if I can, uh, I don't know, use a bassoon sound maybe. That might be nice. Ah, nice. Or I can use another bell sound, right? There was a lower pitched bell if I remember right. How does this sound? Well, that was not lower pitch, but that was nice, which reminds me something we can do to make the sound uh, also pretty nice is to use some reverb. And I'm going to use an external VST port. So I'm going to go to my plugins here, VST plugin, and I'm going to use the, uh, well, the free to download and use Valhalla Supermassive, which is something I use essentially for all of my music projects. Uh, and a VST object, I just have to plug the audio here, and the first two outlets are going to be the audio out I can lock the patch and click on this wrench here to open the Valhalla supermassive interface and let's have some really large triangulum hole reverb ah that does sound really nice uh, and what about the bassoon okay, it's almost a patty sound isn't it i mean you can of course change this you can add other effects you can do whatever you want but let me try adding some other chords 
uh, let's see, what about a minor seventh chord? Right, which would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten. I believe these are the steps required for a minor seventh chord. If I do this, again, I have to trigger my Uzi so all the right values are loaded here, and I do my bassoon. I get a really tasty, spacey minor seven chords, and I don't know. Let's let's do let's do the whole tone scale. This can also be a random scale notes generated, right? So one, two, four, six, uh, eight, and ten. What if I do a whole tone scale? Oop. I forgot to click on the button for the Uzi, so it's still using the values for my minor 7 chord. But if I do this... I suddenly get French Impressionism uh, in the form of a whole tone scale. And lastly, I can also go into the negatives, right? That was something I could do when I'm pitch shifting, so I can also do 0, 4, 7, 11, 14, but I can also go into the other direction and do minus one, so one semitone lower, minus two, three, four, five, minus six, seven, eight, minus nine, 10, 11, 12. So an octave lower. So now this is a major major seventh chord that also goes in the other direction. Two octave major seventh chord. I did it again, I forgot to press this. And you heard what happened, I can't change the chords while the audio is playing. So if I loop this, I can simply click on these and then the Uzi to change the pitch shift in real time. And with the reverb that creates a very fat, cool soundscape. I can even just keep clicking on this Uzi to generate uh, different notes in the same chord. So, there you have it, uh, multi-channel harmonic delay. Uh, it's just a slightly complicated algorithm here, but otherwise everything is fairly simple, which means you can take this, you can use this, and I hope you use this. I hope you create something with this, and I hope you have fun doing it. Thank you for watching.